Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you like this episode, please remember to hit the like button and leave a comment or two, then subscribe and click on the bell to receive notifications of whenever we release new videos. Also, please remember to share them to your social media. Welcome back to Scary Bear Attacks. Today's episode whisks us away to about 100 miles north of Phoenix, Arizona to a place just outside of Prescott called Groom Creek. It isn't exactly the back 40 here, as there are homes all around this rural development. There are even a few small businesses nearby. The terrain is hilly and covered with stands of spruce, pine, and juniper trees. There are an average of 300 trees per acre here, which is high density. The wildlife in the area includes mule deer, elk, pronghorn, antelope, turkey, and javelinas, to name a few. The dominant predators in this area include mountain lions, coyotes, foxes, bobcats, and black bears. It is in this scenic and peaceful setting that our episode takes place today. At 7.40 a.m. on Friday, June 16, 2023, 66-year-old Stephen Jackson was sitting down at a table on his rural property to enjoy a morning cup of coffee. He was building a cabin on some land he owned and was just beginning to plan his work day. He was from Tucson and recently relocated to his land in Yavapai County on a quiet wooded lot. Stephen had been camping here regularly and enjoyed the peace and serenity. Whenever he came up to work on his cabin, Stephen would sleep on a hard shell pop-up tent mounted on a rack over the back of his truck bed. It was made by a company called Roof Nest and was the state of the art in camping. It provided an elevated sleeping area which would be sure to keep you safe from any animals which may wander into your camp. It had a reduced vulnerability to being attacked by an animal like a bear, who would find a ground-based tent easy access, even though this kind of encounter rarely happens. Users describe this means of tent camping as granting a sense of security more than ground tenting it. Stephen's neighbor, David Montano, described him as extremely intelligent and very friendly. The two had exchanged phone numbers when they first met several years back and had been friendly neighbors ever since. Montano liked Jackson and enjoyed how happy he always was when he was up on his property. He and Jackson's other neighbors would while away hours on his property, chatting. He looked forward to the completion of Jackson's home and continuing to build their friendship. As Stephen prepared his coffee, he set up his typical morning ritual a comfy camping chair by his table only a few yards from his cabin site. As he relaxed, he had no way of knowing there would be a dangerous visitor to his site on this day. With Stephen's back facing the wooded part of his lot, he couldn't possibly have seen the very large male black bear approaching him. Bears have plantigrade feet, which means their weight is distributed over a larger area like human feet. Their feet have thick rubbery pads similar to dogs that flex around any object they step on. This may keep twigs from snapping or prevent other sounds while they approach their prey. While I was in the back country of Alaska, I once had an enormous brown bear shake the ground with thudding footsteps as he approached me, stop, then slip away without as much as a twig snap. Nobody witnessed precisely how the black bear closed in on Stephen, but his neighbors suddenly heard him yelling for help. They rushed outside to see Stephen in the grasp of a huge black bear, clearly terrified. Neighbors began flocking to the attack site. Many of them yelled and screamed at the bear, trying to frighten it off. Others got into their vehicle and approached the area, honking their horns, but none of it scared the bear away. As the bear bit and clawed Stephen, the man yelled and tried pushing the bear away from him. With all the din raised by the neighbors, the bear began to drag Stephen away, about 75 yards down a slope. That is when one of them went to get Montano. Montano worked for the government, and as part of his training, was well trained with firearms. He firmly believed that a firearm in the hands of a trained person can save lives, but on this day, he was painfully wrong. Montano was sleeping when he heard a thunderous pounding on his front door. He leapt out of bed and ran to the door to see what all the ruckus was about. As he opened the door, he witnessed an exasperated neighbor telling him to get his gun because a bear had Stephen. Incredulous, he scrambled to grab his rifle. By the time Montano arrived at Stephen's lot, he was nowhere to be found. Bystanders directed him to look down the hill, and he quickly made his way through the trees and down the slope. As he searched for Stephen, he could see the bear standing over him. The bear was eating Stephen's lifeless body and slowly dragging Stephen further away. 
He raised his rifle and fired once, and the bear immediately rolled off of Stephen. Knowing how a dead bear can quickly become a partly dead bear, he fired once more into the bear's limp corpse. Montano and other neighbors quickly called the Yavapai Sheriff's Department and requested medical help at the location. They ran to Stephen's side to see if they might be able to help him. Stephen was a mess, with large bite wounds, and was not responding to them. By the time the police arrived on the scene, they found Stephen had died from loss of blood and trauma. His smile was erased in his painful expression of death. Arizona Fish and Game Department officials showed up and completed a brief investigation. They indicated that there was nothing left out that would attract the bear to Stephen's lot. He hadn't left food out or spilled anything that a bear might find enticing. Stephen had followed the Bee Bear Aware guidelines in terms of keeping a clean campsite free from trash and food. They also indicated there were no reports of an aggressive bear in the area. It seemed this bear had never shown up on their radar as a problem bear. They took the bear's body for a necropsy to gain insight into why this attack happened. The report indicated that the bear was very large, weighing 360 pounds. It had a good amount of fat and had no sign of illness or disease. A rabies test was performed on the bear and came back negative. Authorities labeled the incident a predatory attack and struggled to explain just why it happened. The bear's stomach contents were removed. It had tissues from Stephen's body mixed in with some seeds and plants it had consumed previously. At our Patreon link below, you will find pictures of the attack scene and the dead bear after Montano shot it. There are no pictures of Stephen's injuries there, but the pictures are always great to analyze for context. There is nothing particularly graphic there except the dead bear. Stephen's remains were removed and transported to the coroner's office for analysis, but it didn't take a medical professional to explain his death. Authorities thanked Montano for dispatching the predatory bear before it could hurt or kill anyone else. They said that they avoided having to conduct a hunt for the bear since it was killed at the attack site. His neighbors, friends, and family were saddened by the manner and suddenness of Stephen's passing. Montano recalled how Stephen was looking forward to enjoying his remaining time at his favorite place on Groom Creek, and now he will stay there eternally. Since 1990, 15 people have been attacked by black bears in Arizona. Stephen's attack was only the second human fatality in over 12 years. There are reportedly only 2,000 to 2,500 black bears in Arizona, which makes Stephen's attack even more puzzling. After reviewing the details of this episode, I have some questions for you. We have reported in our episode on bear repellents and attractants that bears are drawn to the smell of coffee grounds. Do you think it was Stephen's early morning cup of joe that brought the bear to him? Do you think bear spray would have prevented this attack? Does this attack show you that precautions like being bear aware around your campsite and sleeping in elevated accommodations are not enough to avoid a predatory bear attack? Are you surprised at the massive size of the bear that killed Stephen Jackson? I will enjoy reading and responding to your comments, so please post them below and let's talk about it. Thank you for watching Scary Bear Attacks. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider clicking on the like button and clicking on the bell icon. We'll help you know when we post our new episodes. Posting our video links to your social media profiles furthers awareness, and it's fun. We slashed our prices in our merch store, linked below. So check out the bargains there while you shop. As a member of our human community, remember to adventure bravely and be careful out there, especially in bear country. I would like to thank our Patreons. Thank you, Kimberly Bean, Mary Bradford, Guntucky, Rasmus L.A., 1-4 Deking, Paul Wincoop, David Veda Jr., Eleanor Hardy, Patricia Hermanowski, Toussaint, Angela Hammett, Marvin Alexander, Pam Stevens, Lulu 0000, Splash Log, Trevor Hannon, Jesse J. Driss, Janelle Holly, C.J., Avant Kathy Ashuri, Diane Collier, Sandy Nielsen, Justin Land, Stephen Earl Smith, Stephen McLaughlin, A.J. Miller, Homa Masters, Ricky Helms, David Atkins, Shoulders Repeat, Gerald Purcell, Dan Kemp, CCCNC, Alan LaFramboise, Regina Gilroy, Reith, Ballard, Sheldon, Lewis, Sheila Baker, Carl Childers, Dion Lynch, Biotoxic Beast, Gary Eric, Seal Rose, Victor Senku, Abhishek, Bunia, Tracy Green, Young Games 34, Underscore, Heather Lee, Duran Terrell, Matt Mochi, Connor, Lavin Werner, Voss, L. Justin Curry, Susan Holt Butterfield, Sebastian Kelak, Brandon Wizard Wood, Nicole N. Angel Barnhill, Joey Pinter, Mauro Padano, Bubri, TJ Schools, Katie V. Wright, Gary Highland, Cody Love, Katsy Murphy Andrews, Matt Bagney, Lindy Dawn, Alejandro Figueroa, 
Darcio Pacifico, Rose H. Lori, McKay, Carrie Peters, Melissa Gottlieb, Megan Trend, Nathan P. Cole, Rodriguez, Aurora, April, Donovan, Ryan Cernicky, Chris Marler, Wayne Washington, Fluffy Feet, Cheyenne, Greg Schaefer, and Drone Adventures. Your support means the world to me.